Established by the United Nations as an independent organization in 1957, the International Atomic Energy Agency serves 168 member countries as the world's foremost forum for scientific and technical cooperation in the peaceful use of nuclear technology. As part of their non-proliferation mission, IAEA's network of analytical laboratories help assure the safe, secure, and peaceful use of nuclear technologies through collaborative measurements on test samples and reference materials around the globe. In 2017, the Savannah River National Laboratory was named the only United States member of IAEA's Network of Analytical Laboratories for Nuclear Material Accountancy Measurements. SRNL's analytical laboratories at DOE Savannah River Site F area have a long tradition of meeting and exceeding stringent international standards. For over 40 years, we've been in the business of measuring uranium and plutonium for accountability measurement for the Department of Energy. We have about 80 methods here in the laboratory, and any of those methods can be called on any day, and samples can come any time. We're 24 hour operations. So we got people out here seven days a week, 365 days a year. Our main mission is to provide timely, accurate, and precise analyses to our internal customers. So we can accept just about any type of sample. We have expertise in a variety of measurements, like both mass spectrometry methods, spectroscopy methods, counting methods, and also radiochemistry methods. So we have the capability to provide a variety of analytical services. NWAL certification isn't simple. IAEA evaluated the analytical laboratory's methodologies and entire quality control program. And even though SRNL has supported the agency in varying capacities for 20 plus years, no leeway was given. A series of proficiency exercises and IAEA visits began a six-year process that challenged both equipment and personnel. So to be an accepted laboratory for IAEA, first you have to have the right kind of instrumentation that's state-of-the-art for the measurements that they want to perform. We have thermal ionization mass spectrometers, we have control potential coulometers. We receive plutonium and uranium samples They'll have in-growth products of americium and neptunium, but the primary desire is to measure the plutonium or uranium concentration or isotopic abundance. So we're uniquely qualified to do this work because of the equipment that we operate, but more so than that of the personnel and the training of the people that we have. There aren't a ton of competitors who can work in the radiological environment with special nuclear materials and obtain the precision and accuracy in their analysis that we can do. With the NWAL certification, SRNL can also receive IAEA inspection and evaluation samples in the event of an outage or during peak periods at IAEA's Vienna laboratory. Moreover, SRNL and their employees are proud to help promote the peaceful use of nuclear technologies while expanding their role as an internationally recognized analytical laboratory. It was a six-year process, so we have a better program than we had six years ago, and that benefits our customers in quality. If you have better quality, you're more cost-effective. Being part of NWAL gives us recognition from an outside customer. It pushes us to do the best we can. We're all very grateful for the important work that the International Atomic Energy Agency does to support the secure, peaceful use of nuclear technologies across the globe. You know, moreover, our lab is very proud to have been closely supporting them for the last two decades or more. But this recent announcement of inviting our laboratory to be part of their network of analytical labs, in fact, to be the only U.S. lab to be invited to join that group, really raises the level of our partnership. We've always known that our SRNL folks who work in the F area lab are the best in the world at what they do. Well, this announcement clearly shows that the rest of the world would agree.
This month's CI Update takes a look at our overall continuous improvement metrics and last month's SRNS-focused improvement transformation events recap. FY17 employee engagement through March stands at 28.6%. 62 CI initiatives or FIT events were started or completed, and 615 ideas were submitted. Cumulative savings and efficiencies total over $15 million, representing 72% of our annual goal. Improving processes and making our work life better is at the core of continuous improvement. Have an idea for improvement? Contact the FIT Core team or your division continuous improvement representative and start your own improvement journey today. Every year, employees are notified to fill out their individual conflict of interest questionnaires. But what often goes unnoticed is reporting any income outside of their SRS employment. It's not uncommon for employees to take on the occasional odd job, but anytime you generate outside income during the year, except for military service, it should be noted on a conflict of interest Hello. questionnaire and resubmitted. If you have any questions, call your ethics office. This month, Roving Camera goes to the site Earth Day celebration to find out what's the importance of Earth Day to you. I think it, Earth Day is good because it recognizes the importance of uh, keeping the planet healthy and um, making sure we do what we need to do to sustain it. Earth Day is not only about respecting the Earth, but also planting things that you can consume from the Earth. Earth Day is very important because, uh, I mean, it's our Earth, we live here, my children live here, and it's important for us to build sustainable systems to keep it uh, as good or better than we found it. I think the big thing for me is trying to instill the Earth Day spirit in my son so that it's carried on to the next generation. Do you know what anniversary it is? Four, it's uh, 45th, I think. <laughs> Hold on, let me Google. 47th year observing Earth Day. The 47th. 47th, okay. 47th? Probably, let me double check. Can you sing the Earth Day song? Not if my life depended on it. I'm not sure what the Earth Day song is. Can you sing the Earth Day song? No, I can't. I don't know the Earth Day song. You don't know the Earth Day song? I don't know the Earth Day song. Well, we could try if you did it first because we don't know the Earth Day song. Can you sing the uh, Earth Day song? Absolutely not. I don't know the Earth Day song. Let the Earth move under your feet. <laughs> So keep up the good work, keep passing it on, um, pay it forward a little bit. Let's see if we can't continue to advance the sustainability techniques that we're starting to use around the site and just take full advantage of that. So it's really important to me that people are coming up with great ideas all the time um, to be able to implement out here where we can solve an environmental problem uh, and not have it cost us a lot of money. Someone here said, oh, nice glasses for the 60s and 70s, back to Earth Day. I think recycling, trying to reuse materials as best you can, uh, being friendly to the environment there, that's something we can all do at home. Other than wearing glasses like that, what can everyone do at home to make every day an Earth Day? Reduce, reuse, recycle. Um, just be conscious of the chemicals that you're using and recycle as much as possible and um, just get involved in your community and, and clean it up. Plant trees. What can everyone do at home? The same thing. Plant a tree. Plant a tree. Compost. Save water. Save energy. Put your clothes on the clothesline. Ride your bicycle instead of your car. What can everyone do at home to make every day an Earth Day? Well, it'll be good to the environment. They can, you know, help plant trees. Well, we've only got one earth, so we got to take care of it. So, uh, and that's what we do. The true meaning of life is to plant trees under whose shade we do not expect to rest. And this means that we should always give forward more than we take. <laughs>